Hello, this is Ross Plasco, and welcome to my brand new tutorial, How to Make a Cartoon for Beginners, Part 2. Now before, we spoke about how to animate a really simple character, but what we didn't talk about was recording your script, setting up a scene, and having multiple characters talking to each other at once. So by the end of this tutorial, you should have your own fully functioning cartoon. Let's do this! So the first thing you need is your audio as a .wav file so that you can import it into After Effects and then animate from the audio. To record audio, just download any one of the many free audio recording programs. I personally use Audacity. Here's something I recorded earlier. We're having a conversation! Yes! Yes we are! Great! Wow, what a fantastic conversation! What I usually do with my audio when it's just been recorded is I cut it down. I cut out all of the silences in between whatever I'm saying. So let's highlight this, delete. Highlight this, delete. Highlight this, delete. And this, delete. And maybe even this. Hey, save some file space. Play again. We're having a conversation! Yes! Yes we are! Great! Wow, what a fantastic conversation! See, now it's got a bit more pace. It's a, it's a bit more funny. <laughs> now we need to save it as a WAV file. Export. WAV. Conversation. Audio. One. WAV. Save. Okay. Now it is saved as a .WAV. One of the simplest ways of animating is the technique I used in my cartoon A Lovely Day in the Park. I want you to drink this fresh glass of frothy cat urine, Stephen. It's just enough to get across a simple script, telling jokes. The characters which I made in Photoshop are literally just a, a guide for a mouth so that we know where to put the mouths on, the eyebrows, eyelids, pupils, and a blank body to put all of this stuff onto. It's the same with the other character. Blinky blinky blinky. Along with characters, you're gonna also need a background. I got my friend Lara Jane Van Antwerpen to do this for me, and it's damn fine. So, now we have both of our characters layered up, we have the mouths, we have the audio, and we have a background. Let's put it all into After Effects and animate it. Find the mouths. Composition, yes. Open as a composition. Okay. Open as a composition. Okay. Find the audio. Conversation audio. And find the background. Now, the background is the biggest bit, so let's put that into a composition. And now let's put the two characters into that composition as well. S for scale. Make them about the same height. Move them next to each other. Make this one a bit larger. Okay, we have our two characters in the setting. Let's put our audio in there. End for end. And you'll see nothing happens. We're having a conversation! Yes! Yes we are! Great! Wow, what a fantastic conversation! So, let's get the camera movements going. Highlight all of these layers and put them into their own special little comp. Shift Command C. Change the composition settings to what you're actually going to upload to YouTube. 1280 by 720. Now you see there's a lot more space to work with. We can move this around we can have a whole load of movement. But to start with, in sketches, you usually show both the characters at the same time. So that's how it's going to begin. And then on the second line, it usually switches to just one of the characters. So let's change the scale and position. You. And then move forward one frame. And zoom in on just one of the characters. And then let's move over to the other character. Great. 
And then on the last shot, it's usually the same as the first shot. So the camera movements look like this. We're having a conversation. Yes. Yes, we are. Great. Wow, what a fantastic conversation. So now we have the timings done and we have the camera shots done. Let's animate the two characters. Firstly, we're going to drag the mouths composition into the character composition. Stick that in its place. Excellent. Next up, we need to put the audio inside the character's compositions, because at the moment there is no audio inside this composition. You can't hear a thing, and therefore you can't lip sync. So let's grab the audio and put it inside this character composition. Let's do the same for the other character. Drag the audio in here. Let me go to the end. Then you may think, Ross, 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 there's going to be three audios now. How loud is that going to be? That's going to be like triple the volume that you're going to need. OK, OK, so let's mute these two. And then in the final composition, which is which is one outside of this composition, you're only going to hear one audio because I've muted two of them. OK, excellent. Let's animate Ross. So who is Ross? Is Ross the first person to speak or the second person to speak? Yes. Ross is the second person to speak. Okay, so let's get rid of those eyelids. We're only going to be animating the head because the rest of the body is basically static. Take your own character designs, take your own scripts, put some jokes in there, and this would actually be a funny cartoon. This is just the basics. Okay, so the eyes, well, the pupils. Let's set a keyframe over there. He should be looking at the other character, so over to the left. To make a character look like he's thinking, what I like to do is make him look up and down. Pupils rarely take more than two frames to move from one position to another. So with pupils, you can literally move from one frame Go to the next frame and move it slightly, and then it would look natural. Go ahead a little bit and move it back to the original frame. So just a quick flick up and a quick flick down. When a character is about to speak, I make him blink. It sort of brings attention to the character before he speaks. So it's sort of subconsciously, you know he's about to talk. So let's make him blink by turning the opacity up. And then back down. Blinking is held over about three frames. So blink one, two, three, and then open again. And when Ross says, wow, what a fantastic conversation, he could look at the camera. That could, that could be funny. So let's go to the beginning of wow. Okay, let's move the pupils to look at the camera. And then maybe uh, a down and then up, like he's actually thinking, like he's alive. So that's down and then back up. Let's see how that looks. We're having a conversation. Yes, yes we are. Great. Wow, what a fantastic conversation. That blink doesn't look right because the blink is too close to the eye moving upwards so it sort of looks a bit a bit a bit sloppy a bit sloppy giuseppe so that's move that over there a few frames away from the actual blink now let's animate the mouths we spoke about how to do this in the first beginners tutorial so i'll just run through this quickly without really explaining so i'm going to time remap the mouths i'm going to go inside the mouths and make it only a few frames long. That 22 seconds is way too long for like 13 frames, let's say. Turn all of them on. Make them a frame long each. Grab that, grab that, grab that, grab that. Composition settings. Change the background so we can actually see what the mouths are. Now we have a selection of mouths, and out here we can actually type in the number 
of the mouth that we want to select. At the moment, there is another keyframe at the end of this composition, so let's delete that. Go to the beginning, and the, the mouth should stay still. And whenever he speaks, let's select the number for which the mouth corresponds to. So, yeet, let's make that a yeet look. Yeet, yeet. That. Something I actually learned from someone who commented on my last video is that instead of setting an end keyframe and then a beginning for the next one, all you have to do is highlight them all, change it to toggle hold keyframes. So at the moment it's set to zero, you can see that. So if we delete this one, which is also zero, up until this point where we change it to five, it's going to be zero. So you can see as I drag this through, it's constantly on zero. You only have to type it in when you want the mouth to change. So, so when it's a s, we just have to type in the number that corresponds to s. And I don't know what number that is. Six. Let's have a closed mouth on this one because there's silence. And then a y. Let's get rid of the mouth guide because that is distracting. I really you here's here's an animation tip. Write down what number corresponds with which mouth, because right now I'm working in the blind and it is so frustrating. Also the put the quality down because it is running so slowly. Where is tss, what number is tss? Someone tell me, someone tell me what number is... Oh, it's six. Thanks for telling me, guys. What, what, what would be the circle mouth? Seven. E. We need an E. Five. Or four. is just a wide open mouth like that, R. Uh. And then silence is usually the first frame because it's just a... So let's highlight these, move them all back one frame, and then it should line up with what he's saying. Yes, yes we are. Great, yes, yes we are. Wow, there is no mouth there. Where, where, where did that mouth go? Let's set that to zero, and then you may have noticed that we was only held, the circle mouth was only held for one frame. And you can't actually see it, and it looks sloppy, so let's hold it for two frames by moving the rest of them over there. Now you'll be able yes, to see it. Yes, we are. Great. Yes, yes, we are. Great. Okay, now that still doesn't look good enough, so let's move, let's space these frames out to accentuate yes, the mouths. Yes, we are. Great. Yes, yes, we are. Okay, that's a lot better. Let's go to the next thing that he says. He's going to say, wow, what a fantastic conversation. So what is what? Is that seven? Yes. Ah, ah, is a four. Back to what? Which is seven. What is a three? What? What? Let's go to five for t. Oh no. Where is t? That's t. Six. Up uh, is three. F is must be eight. Yes. At is. That. N is the same as tss because it's just showing teeth. A four. Six for tss. It. 
go ts and t are the same, so it's it. It only changes on it. It. Go back to t and t for a k sound because it's the same shape. O is kind of like R. N is the same as t. V is eight. V. V. Oh, no. A. Uh, uh, uh. R kind of looks like uh, uh. And then N is the same as that. And then silence, zero. Highlight all of these, drag them one frame. Let's see if that lines up nicely. Wow, what a fantastic conversation. Wow, what a fantastic conversation. Perfect. Now, we can move the brows up and down if we'd like. Let's have the eyebrows down for most of it. And then move them up for what he says in the last thing. Let's move the eyebrows at the same time as the eyes. We're having a conversation. Yes. Yes, we are. Great. Wow, what a fantastic conversation. We're having a conversation. Let's move these along one frame so that they move at the same time as the mouths. We're having a conversation. Yes. Yes, we are. Great. Wow, what a fantastic conversation. We're so that's great. I'm going to now animate the other character in exactly the same way, and we're going to fast forward for you so you don't have to sit through boring crap like that again. So now that's done. We're having a conversation. Yes. Yes, we are. Great. Wow, what a fantastic conversation. The only thing your cartoon needs is credits. So let's go to the last point where someone's speaking. <laughs> and straight after they close their mouth, put in a new layer. Let's just say black. Make it stop there. Alt and the left bracket, whatever. Put in some text. Created by Ross. Yeah. Created by Ross. Yeah. Uh, that is black text. Make it whatever white. Doesn't matter. Um. Put it center. Cut that off there, make it play for about one and a half seconds because it's such a short cartoon. Render it, shift command forward slash. Click lossless, quick time, uh, H264 codec, that's in format options. Uh, 1280 by 720 because that's the size of the composition that you set. Click audio output on, OK. Choose the file location. Let's just say desktop. Let's call it cartoon one. Save render. That is the sound of something I can't remember. So there it is, you have a finished cartoon. You can you can subscribe right now, youtube.com forward slash Ross. You can become my patron on Patreon. But the most important thing comes from the script. The script is the most important part of your cartoon. I don't care how good it's animated. If your script is boring, your cartoon will be boring. The one piece of advice I can give on script writing is if you or your friend says something and it makes you laugh out loud at least once, then it is worth putting in a cartoon. Um, you have to trust that your first instinct about the joke was correct and the proof was that it made you laugh out loud. Trust that until you're done making the cartoon and people will laugh at your cartoons. I've been Ross Plasco. See you in the next lecture.